an impact on climate change, as simple as making a decision. Our next speaker, Naima Montessere, is here to tell us about how we can all make a difference in the climate in this world. It may be as simple as choosing red or green. All right, we are all going on a trip. And for this trip, you have to pick one of two boats setting off. Let's see. Oh, all done. Okay, <laughs> we have to pick one of two boats setting off. The first boat is red, and it's powering forward toward a future in which we continue on the same path as we're on today. As humans, we will continue to burn fossil fuels, release carbon dioxide, increase the greenhouse effect, and the earth will heat up. The heating will cause glaciers and ice caps to melt, sea levels to rise, and our global weather patterns to change. Our agricultural hotspots will turn into deserts, and our freshwater supplies will decrease. From the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, the average temperature around the world could increase by about 4 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit by the year 2100. Scientists have shown in study after study that our human activities are increasing carbon dioxide faster than any natural phenomenon. Carbon dioxide and other gases build up in our atmosphere, trapping heat radiating from Earth back to space, resulting in global warming. The Earth heats up. Changes in climate will vary across each region. The second boat is green, and it's sailing to a future in which we utilize sustainable energy sources, less carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, and maintaining a balanced ecosystem is a top priority. Our ocean ecosystems are given the chance to recover from overfishing, and in turn, we breathe cleaner air, because about 70 to 80% of our oxygen comes from the ocean. We create an economy less focused on oil and more focused on human health from the EPA. If we make big changes, like using more renewable resources, the increase could be less, about two to five degrees Fahrenheit. So, which boat would you choose? If we know this information, why don't we jump on the green boat, or at least take that scary first step onto the boat deck? We think, it doesn't affect us. It's somebody else's problem. It's not. How many of you have asthma, or know somebody that does? Asthma affects about 1 in 12 people, and the numbers are increasing every year. Increases in air pollution interact with allergens, triggering more severe asthma attacks. Cities like Dallas pose the biggest health threats for asthmatics. Hot summer temperatures create ground-level ozone high air pollution days. Ozone, which is created when air pollutants chemically react in the presence of sunlight, is a well-known trigger for asthma attacks in children, as well as breathing troubles for adults with chronic lung diseases. Or how many of you have allergies? Nasal allergies are estimated to affect about 50 million Americans, and its prevalence is increasing. Warmer air temperatures mean an allergy season that starts earlier and lasts longer. Carbon dioxide itself fuels greater pollen production in plants such as ragweed, a well-known cause of seasonal allergies. Have you ever had food poisoning? Wasn't it terrible? I once got it from a Subway sandwich. Warmer air temperatures can also e increase cases of salmonella and other bacteria-related food poisoning. The CDC estimates that one in six Americans get sick and 3,000 die every year from foodborne diseases. Warmer air temperatures can also favor parasites and disease such as West Nile. West Nile is uh, something we know here in Dallas all too well. In 2012, in Dallas County, 20 people died from West Nile. More mosquitoes lead to more insecticides being sprayed, causing more pollution in our environment, which leads to more rain, more mosquitoes, more insecticides. It's a vicious cycle. If you can't connect to any of those, surely you can connect to water. Fresh, clean water is a resource we can't live without. The average American uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water per person per day, and some estimates go as high as 500 gallons. In contrast, the average African family uses about 5 gallons of water per day. 
the same amount of water it takes to flush most toilets just one time. In 2014, Toledo, Ohio was forced to ban the drinking of their tap water, affecting over 400,000 residents. The cause involved the subtle effects of climate change, such as more rain, less wind, and invasive species. The effect was a large algae bloom, which produced a toxin in the water, making it harmful for consumption. The World Health Organization estimates that between the years 2030 and 2050, climate change will add an additional 250,000 deaths per year from malaria, malnutrition, diarrhea, and heat stress. So, are you thinking about taking a step onto that green boat yet? Let's weigh our options. If we stay on the red boat and continue to release carbon dioxide, we will cause catastrophic changes to our world quickly. If we choose the green boat and release less carbon dioxide, we at the very least have the chance to lessen the speed of our atmosphere warming. The green boat has the chance to change the outcome. The red boat doesn't. By definition, a challenge is hard and success is not assured. It seems really complicated, but it's really simplistic. We are all connected to the environment. So why not change? Is it too hard to change? Individuals matter, you matter, it affects you. So how do we change? Social scientists and psychology tells us we have a tendency to favor information which reinforces pre-existing views while avoiding contradictory information. Basically, we watch, read, and listen to information that doesn't challenge us. Exposing yourself to new ideas and challenging your own beliefs can cause personal growth. It's important to take steps to move from a fixed mindset of believing you can't make a difference and your talents and thoughts are fixed traits to a growth mindset of believing you can change and you can grow. So the first step is to let yourself be inspired. By someone or something, open yourself up to think and grow. I wasn't inspired by people, health, or the environment. I fell in love with animals. One of my first jobs was working as a zookeeper in a private facility with the most amazing animal habitats, except for one problem. We had to go in with the animals. And in this case, that meant black bears. <laughs> but you get used to being amidst black bears every day. You know their names, their personalities, and you can watch for mood swings. So I entered the lower bear habitat just like any other day, armed with my rake, my bucket, and my superpower bear spray dangling from my keychain. As I picked up poop, I noticed one of the bears, Jane, getting closer to me. Jane was a former nuisance bear in the wild. Nuisance bears are picked up multiple times for being too close to people, eating trash, or destroying human property. Jane was finally destined to find a captive home, and to be quite honest, she hated it. And on this day, she was pissed off about it. And next thing I know, Jane is on her hind legs in an aggressive stance about 10 feet away from me. I talk softly at first and then more stern, drop my bucket and arm myself with my rake. She moved in closer and I slowly backed away. I grabbed my bear spray and I pressed on the release. But it turns out that superpower bear spray doesn't work at all. <laughs> Jane acted like she had a little bit of onion in her eye. I sprayed more and quickly backed up to the gate where my coworker impatiently waited on the other side. It was in that moment, staring eye to eye with a black bear that I thought, what am I doing here? But in that same breath, I thought, what is Jane doing here? It took me years to figure out what that moment really meant for me. I knew that I always wanted to do more for wildlife, but I wasn't sure how. I was not always inspired to make changes in my life to be more green. My dad still reminds me on an almost weekly basis of my life growing up with my really long hot showers and my desire to have every light on in every room all the time. I never thought about the environment. I loved animals, but I wasn't connected. But I realize you are not all inspired by the same thing I am, and you can't all have a run-in with a black bear. But the thing about the environment is we are all connected. Everything we use, ultimately, it came from the environment. So find your way to be inspired. Leilani Munter, a sassy NASCAR driver, was voted the number one eco-athlete in the world. She says, after watching a documentary, it put her activism into overdrive. She now drives a fully electric Tesla as her personal vehicle and is working with companies to create an electric race car. Or maybe you like numbers and finance. Companies that are great environmental stewards are actually outperforming their peers financially. 
A new report from Morgan Stanley finds that investing in sustainability usually met and often exceeded the performance of traditional comparable investments. Or maybe your passion is technology. The physical components of technology come from, you guessed it, the environment. Did you know that your smartphone most likely contains a mineral called coltan, which is harvested in the Congo and negatively impacts Congolese people as well as critically endangered mountain gorillas? But there are so many positives to technology as well. Technology can help move us forward, making desalination more efficient, which is removing the salt from water to make it usable. The possibilities are endless. Technology can help us reach climate stability, but we should not use technology as a cover-up to do nothing. Or maybe you have more of an affinity for high fashion than I do. Stella McCartney is one of the world's largest designers, worn by stars like Kate Blanchett and Reese Witherspoon. And Stella is known for pushing sustainability in the fashion industry. Although she comes under some criticism for not doing everything right, her quote really sums it up. Stella said, I'm a big believer in that doing just a little something is a lot better than doing a lot of nothing. Or maybe your aspirations are political, and I hope they are. I hope many of you in this audience have a political interest. A representative of the general public in our governments, that's where change will happen. Our governments set policy that directly impacts our climate. And we want our politicians to be representative of the future we want, the boat we want to be on. So no matter where you look, as long as you remind yourself of everything's connection to the environment and open up to being inspired, the inspiration is there. The next step is to make a mini change. Start small. Starting small develops your subconscious brain to start making green decisions on its own. Start training it to do just one thing, Pick something you'll be successful with and start with day one. There are also tools out there to help make it easier for you, such as mobile apps like Good Guide and Seafood Watch that do all of the research for you, allow you to go to the grocery store, scan products, and easily make informed decisions. And if all else fails, fake it. Fake caring until you do care. In my class, I really don't mind when students fake their interest because subconsciously, they're turning their brain onto a different thought. The seed has been planted. A few months ago, I had an opportunity to watch the amazing horse show, Cavalia, and I was especially moved by a portion of the show when the performers led the audience in a chant of the words, Owalu Ge Mufon. After chanting it over and over, we were all involved, and when they finally revealed the meaning of the words, a hush fell over the crowd. The meaning, no more war on earth, more to us now that we were all part of it. Psychology tells us we need to be personally involved to care. So, let's all together say, I care about my future. <laughs> and lastly, join the club. It's cool to cool climate change. Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Cameron Diaz, me. <laughs> it's in everything we do. It can speak money and finances, be on our radios with music, and be sexy in fashion. It's not about one group. Climate change relates and affects to you as an individual. It's up to us as individuals to expose ourselves to change and make a difference in your world. Live a purposeful life. No matter your race, ethnicity, social status, religion, political party, or any other label, we are all people with the ability to learn and make change. It's about you. Individuals can make a difference. So find your reason to be better. Get better, not bitter. And remember, you have a choice. And I choose green. Thank you. <laughs>